I'm never going to be able to watch Roseanne the same way again. I mean, my god, I'm just going to think John Goodman's going to fucking kill Roseanne in her sleep. Which, let's be honest, we all wanted to see anyway. Let's go, it's the Whitey Show. Ten Cloverfield... <clears throat> Can't even get the words out. Sorry, just woke up. 10 Cloverfield Lane is a movie that I was not expecting in way. Listen, let's get it right out right now. Before you go watch this movie, this is not a sequel in the same sense that it's a monster movie like Cloverfield 1 or Cloverfield was. If you haven't seen Cloverfield, it was a found footage film with kids running away or teenagers or adults or whatever they were running away from this creature that is destroying New York. And it's really cool how it slowly is breaking down the city where you get like glimpses of it until the very end and then you see the ugliness of it. This movie is quite different. In this movie you got three main characters. You got Emmett, you got Howard, and you got Michelle. And these three characters are all that's really in the movie. So you're thinking, oh man, it's gonna be like really boring movie. It's three characters, what are they going to do in a freaking shelter or a bunker? A lot. Very much a lot. What, what they're trying to do is survive whatever's out there. And you kind of have an idea and you kind of believe some of the stuff that John Goodman's character is saying, Howard. But not enough. So, the movie is really like a thriller slash creepy slow build slash mystery slash some action. Overall, this movie is so many different genres, and they mix it up so well that I really did enjoy it. The things I love, one of it being that there's all these different genres, and they all work when they come together, which I totally didn't expect, and it totally could have backfired and turned into complete and utter shit, and instead was actually pretty damn good, so that was a nice twist. Another thing I loved is the chemistry between all these characters. They all felt real. Listen, we're doing a movie about being stuck in a bunker. This can go really wrong. And if the characters don't feel real or they don't mesh well with each other, it's not going to work. But it worked real well. Emmett's relationship with Michelle felt organic, felt this is how you would act if you meet someone in a bunker and it's just you two. And then the relationship with insane Howard, John Goodman, was perfectly creepy. It was a mix of him trying to be a father figure, possibly a pedo, but maybe not because nobody's like a pedo pedo. It, it, it's just like this really weird feeling. Plus he's a scary creature. Someone standing in front of you like this, what are you doing? And he weighs bigger than me, like an extra hundred pounds. That's pretty fucking scary. That scares the shit out of me. So, you get to actually see the reactions from the two different characters and how they react differently. From Michelle, who just met this dude after a car crash, to seeing how uh, Emmett reacts, who knows him. And they still, and he's still scared of him. Another thing I really liked about the movie, the pacing. It was just, to me, flew by. It flew by. Usually in movies, I start suspecting that I'm sitting here for two hours. Almost every movie I watch. This, I watch this shit, I'm like... Oh, it's over? Oh, I could have went for another 30 minutes. I'm not kidding. That's weird because usually movies start getting on my nerves at the hour and a half part. Even even movies that I enjoy, I still are like, damn, it's getting late. This one, I was like engrossed. And it's possibly because this movie is such a great buildup. It always keeps you entertained. Something always is happening. And the ending is something that you're, I think, either going to love or hate. But... In my opinion, it's a positive, so I'm going to mention it. I'm not going to tell you what happens. That's for another video I might do with my buddy Nick Pell. But the ending is what ties us into the Cloverfield universe. It does not have anything related to Cloverfield, the first movie. I want to make that clear. But it feels like it connects in a way at the end. And I enjoyed the ending. It, it left me guessing a little bit. Listen, the movie is a mystery in a lot of ways. And throughout, you keep guessing stuff and it changes on you. The, perspe the perspective of what might happen, totally it gets phased out just by little things around the house or the bunker or what's happening outside. So I did love that. Even though I guessed most of it, it still felt like it was really well handled and done. So then you look at the negatives. And the negatives are really, really limited. Um, 
the things that I didn't really like too much was the fact that she was like a, a designer which kind of came exactly in handy for the situation they needed to build a suit to go outside for the world is toxic that's what they're told so I felt like that was like kind of convenient would have been cooler if like she maybe done a little bit of it back in the day and she had to use her skills as a kid to try to create a suit that would have been better than I was going to do this type of stuff become a dress designer and so I know how to stitch a perfect fucking suit together with it you know that was a little some odd for me but that was it really I I'm like sitting here trying to think of other negatives but I really can't like I know people can there's stuff that they won't like but I love this movie like the more I think about it, it's kind of those type of movies where you're sitting there and then you get sucked in and you're like oh and then you're like hmm maybe not like that but then you think more about it and then you really like it like there's so many little pieces in this movie that leave it up to the interpretation of the viewer which I absolutely love I know I keep going over stuff now I love again. So I'm just going to sum it up. Listen, 10 Cloverfield Lane is not a monster movie in the way you're thinking. But it is totally a monster movie. Just because a big monster isn't around eating people does not mean it can't be a monster movie. A monster is something scary. A monster is something haunting. A monster is something going to fucking kill you. And John Goodman is the scariest monster ever. Don't know why I did that. I, I, I just don't. But John Goodman is scary. He scared me. He scared me. He reminded me of Jack from The Shining. Done better in my opinion. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Shining fans. So overall, I'm going to give 10 Cloverfield Lane a 4 out of 5. And you guys know I hardly give those out. That means I really enjoy it. It is my favorite movie of the year so far. I really love the chemistry between all the characters. I love the acting. I love the events and the mysteries and the twists the ending i really enjoyed i like how it tied in with the series you, you just gotta go see it it's a movie that i totally recommend like nothing happens in the movie that you have to see on the big screen but i see i tell you to go see it because it's just so creepy that this movie deserves your money because it's so well done so go check out 10 cloverfield lane and in this little thing above or above here, I'm going to put a little poll that says which one did you like more. So when you do go watch it, tell me what you like more, Cloverfield or Cloverfield Lane. And I have to tell you, I enjoyed this one slightly more than Cloverfield. And I'm one of those guys who really did enjoy Cloverfield 1 despite all the hate that it gets now. So, that's it. I hope you liked my video. If you did, hit that like button. If you love me, hit subscribe button. More movies and game reviews coming. Everybody have a wonderful day. I'm going to go downstairs and play some XCOM and Division. Bye-bye.